Thanks for the support as a channel member, Kieran Hodgkinson. Well, I'm recording this before you've seen the transfer special from yesterday. So I'm just going to assume you all thought I did really well and didn't make any mistakes. Hello and welcome to Club 4, part 25 in non-league to legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first two games of the new Premier League season. We're away against Brighton and at home against Wolves. If by any chance you did miss yesterday's transfer special, I urge you to go back and watch it. I, I, I mean, the idea was good. We spent £150 million on defenders. That's got to be a good thing, right? But then all of the defenders got injured which is a bad thing, which means going into the first day of the new season, this is what our back four looks like, uh, three debuts and a central midfielder. <sighs> the positives, the three guys making debuts are all great. I don't know that they're going to be immediately looking great, uh, but they are all great. We've also signed another defender on loan from Spurs for the season. And when Romero, Caesar, and Nola are all fit again, we have got a lot of very good defenders. It doesn't really help for now, though. Navarro is also great at the base of the midfield. And we've reunited with Colin Schultz, who was with us at Schalke all those years ago. Still only 20 years old. Still classed as a wonder kid. About to take the Premier League by storm, I hope. So this is the team for the game against Brighton. We've got Hoy and Hall in goal. A back four of Aaron, Ugo, Mura, Zamoran, <laughs> and Fernandez. Navarro at the base of the midfield. Your new second tipple ahead of him, then Schultz. In behind Abraham and Pedro Luis. I'm not sure how Brighton are supposed to be getting on this season. Let's just check in. So we're expected to finish eighth. Brighton expected to be 17th. This should be a game we can go and win. But with, I mean, the back six, the only constant really is Hoyenhal. Because even Zamorano, although he's been around for a long time now, he's never once played for us at centre-back. Spent most of last year in central midfield, the season before as our holding midfielder. He's only five foot nine. This could end very, very badly, especially because Pitchford up front for Brighton, if I recall, was one of the Premier League's top scorers. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but there is recent history of him scoring a lot of goals. We just need to hope that the, uh, the three new guys at the back are worth the 140 million or so pounds that I spent on them. <laughs> oh, people keep telling me to do it'll be fine merch we might do if it, if this somehow works out we really might do nil nil half an hour gone this is about as good as we could have hoped for i guess what i'd really like is for uh, schultz to go and grab an absolute worldie for us i think he's been fouled there and won us a penalty so schultz goes down the referee is having a look i can't even see the referee there he is he is consulting with the man who lives in his ear. And fingers crossed, it is a penalty for Norwich. Wonderful stuff. And this should, I think, be Tammy Abraham stepping up to take it. It is Tammy Abraham stepping up to take it. And it's 1-0. And what a penalty that is. We've actually given him his second contract extension since he's been here at Norwich. He originally came in on a one-year contract. Midway through last year, we extended his contract to the end of this season. Over the summer, we've actually given him a new two-year contract. So despite the fact he turns 35 this season, he is under contract for two more years because I'm just working on the assumption that he's going to live forever and play on until he's 40 because his natural fitness is incredible. His physical, his physical attributes are still fantastic. We've seen previous in this game world of a physical monster, Romelu Lukaku, still leading the line for title challenges when he was nearly 40. So on that basis, I'm going against everything I've ever learned about football manager and sticking with an old man as one of my key players. I hope that's not another thing that ends up backfiring on me. Another one of my bright ideas. But ultimately, we're working on quite a restricted budget here at Norwich. The reason for the silly idea that I did over the summer is because we couldn't afford to have eight good defenders. So I figured, let's have six really good ones. That's I wouldn't have sold Mateus. I mean, it did back. It has backfired. It's already backfired. We're going to bring on Griffin Diaz, who, one positive, one thing to compliment me for in the comments section, I have finally 
taken over his individual training and I've actually got him training him as a, as a Mazala now in central midfield. I still maintain you shouldn't have to do that. I'm fairly confident that just playing him there should be enough. But and believe it or not, I've been wrong before. Um, we've got both of our fullbacks are absolutely shattered. As you can imagine, we don't really have <laughs> defenders to bring on. So we're going to leave that as it is. And um, what we are going to do is bring on Casolari to play up front with uh, Tammy Abraham. We've got new boy Rodrigo Garza's too injured to be able to come on in this game. Um, he's sat on the bench, but don't expect to see anything of him. Um, he's the guy who has very big shoes to fill, um, replacing Julian Alvarez in the squad. Although you could argue it's a combination of him and Schultz who are actually replacing Alvarez. Because despite the fact we've reduced our numbers at the back, we've actually got more attacking options now. Gilberto Carlos is a very useful player for us to be able to bring off the bench. One of our most consistent performers of the last year or two. So nice to be able to bring him on with 10 minutes to go. And hopefully we we see more of Schultz. Schultz, I'm, I'm tempted... I mean, my my sort of long-term penciled-in view in my mind is that Schultz is the long-term Abraham replacement and I'll end up playing up front with Yedro in behind as the long-term of our attack. We've obviously Pedro Luis in there as well. That's the plan at the moment, but plans are subject to change. Importantly, though, with the makeshift defence, we have picked up three points on the first day of the new season. Things aren't likely to get much better before the next match. The three of them who were injured are all out for the first month or so. We are still trying to bring Seeker in. Um, I've tried trying to bring Michele back as well. If we can get a couple more fullbacks in the club, it means those guys who played fullback in the last game can move into the centre-back positions and we should be fully stocked on defenders for the season. But Michele's already made it very clear he doesn't want to come back, as has Seeker, to be fair. So let's see if we get either of them. Oh, my word, it gets worse. Uh, Fernandez picked up an injury midweek. He's, I mean, he's doesn't need a fitness test. He should be fine. Just a bruised knee. But that was the start. Uh, Zamorano then also picked up an injury. Um, so he's not going to be available for today. Well, he's sat on the bench for today. Um, I have recalled Haruna from his loan. In fact, he's unregistered. Why does he need to be registered? I thought he was still young. He's been here forever. He's 22 now. Uh, but I realised he's actually homegrown at club uh, because he was signed young enough before I arrived. So, in fact, let's register him now. Um, and then we can get him involved, at least on the bench, because as we know, he's a natural centre-back. Um, so let's just whack him into the squad, which has that actually registered him? It has. Excellent. Um, so back into tactics. Haruna can now come on the bench at the expense, I guess, of Zamorano, who's injured and doesn't need to be there. So Haruna can come on and play centre-back if need be. Like I say, he's a natural there. Um, but at five foot ten, I'm not that excited about him doing the role. So Matthew Hughes, the lone E from Tottenham, will get his first start today. I have tried to solve the problem with bringing in more defenders. Um, we have made an offer for this guy from Inter. Um, I suspect we're not going to get him because he's going to fail his work permit. We had a left back, another one from Dortmund, um, who, Juan Joe, I think his name was. Uh, this guy. Um, he didn't get a work permit. So I thought they would be handy backups. We've also had Seeker turn us down. Man United turned us down for Michaeli. So we are, we're we still desperately scratching around trying to get ourselves some more defenders. Meanwhile, the guys we've already got, are hopefully healing. So this is the team for Wolves. Well, in fact, you know the team for Wolves. The front six is the same that we're in the last game and all we've had to do is bring in Hughes and we've got to keep an eye on Fernandez, who is injured. But, I mean, he was injured. He's now recovered. Ah, Haruna gets his number seven shirt back. I mean, he calls himself a centre-back, then tells me his preferred shirt number is number seven. I can't bring myself to play a number seven at centre-back on a consistent basis. This is as bad as Zealand's ridiculous squad numbering in the network game. And potentially, as other says, I'll left with you. Never watched one of his videos. But in the network game, he has very silly numbering. Uh, right, Navarro. Playing it over to Schultz. And Schultz, I mean, Schultz does quite well, actually. He plays it with Pedro Luis. And now Fernandez charging forward on the right. The good thing about these new centre-backs slash full-backs that we brought in in the summer, all three of them are very, very pacey. We've got a lot of pacey defenders. The, when the final one came in, the, uh, the little comment that we got on the transfer was, the squad is now overloaded with players who like to play it out from the back. 
they're the kind of defenders I was looking for. I want this to be overloaded with them. I don't want a bunch of meatheads back there. Um, so we've got some we've got some quality, and it is handy to be able to have them play across the entire back four as per the original plan. It's just not handy when you then get three or four defenders all injured at the same time and you realise you've got the same reserves in all positions. It doesn't quite work out. That's some useful play there to cut the ball back across. I guess amongst all this, we could have been playing Tipple at left back and Murrah at centre back. Despite playing Tipple as our reserve left back all last year, it didn't really occur to me to do that. That's alarming. Um, but Murrah could be playing. I mean, Hughes might be fine. Sorry, not Murrah, Ugor. I guess the reason I'm not desperate to play Tipple there is because Aaron Ugor, Uga, Uja, he's the one who's an out and out left back, as far as I'm concerned. He can theoretically play centre back as well, but in my mind, he is just an out and out left back. So I don't really want to be moving him across to centre back, especially because Murrah is also a left footer. So we'd be having a very lopsided, left sided cent central defensive partnership if we went with Ugor. And Mura. I will learn all their names eventually. And there is Mura playing it forward to Schultz. Now Pedro Luis Navarro. Here's Uj Uja, Uga, Aaron. I might just call him Aaron. Um, Tipple. Back to Aaron again. And he plays it across. And there's Pedro Luis for his first goal of the new season. At a very important stage of the game as well. We were we were struggling a little bit to make the breakthrough. Approaching half time against a Wolves team that we know we're good enough to be beating even if we've got a makeshift defence on the go. And I keep describing it as a makeshift defence, but in actuality, three of the four that are in there could be starting defenders all season long. Obviously, Noel walks straight back into this defence at the expense of Hughes, but whether Romero forces Fernandez out, we'll see. Whether um, Caesar forces Murrah out, we'll see. There's no guarantees. If these guys play really well, there's no guarantees that we end up bringing back everybody from last year's defence. Because ultimately, we've spent 50 million on him, 50 million on him, and 35 million on him. They're three of the four most expensive players in the history of the football club. You'd expect them to be involved quite a lot. And Abraham playing it back to Tipple. Lovely ball across to Yanusek and an incredible save from the Wolves goalkeeper. That was a nailed on goal. And the uh, the keeper somehow manages to keep it out. It's Schultz to take the corner, looking for Fernandez, but he can't direct his header goalwards, which is a little bit of a shame. We have been comfortably the better team in this game. I would very much like a second goal now, please. Lovely ball in behind Tipple. I mean, he, I don't, is he tired? He looked like... I mean, we've seen Tipple be much faster than that. I'm a little bit alarmed at how slowly Tipple seemed to react to that. Yanusek now trying to play it over the top to Aaron again, who drills it across for Pedro Luis. And there's his second goal of the season. And that is why we spent all that money on our new left back. He has been a threat all game long. And I think as we get into the season, having him one side, Romero the other, we are going to have a lot of pace and, and direct play coming from our overlapping wing-backs that make this system work so well. And he's having a fantastic game on that left-hand side. Two assists for him today. See, I knew the plan was a good one. You all told... I'm assuming you all told me my plan was a bad plan. This is my proof that my plan was a good plan. Right, we're going to take off Fernandez because he was injured midweek. Haruna is going to have to come on for him. And we'll shuffle the defence around a little bit. Mura, despite being a left-footer, can theoretically play right-back. So... I guess we're going to send him over there. Aruna can stay in there as a ball-playing defender on cover with Hughes, who is also a left-footer. Why is everybody left-footed? This is absurd. Right, we're going to take off Tipple again. Griffin Diaz can come on for him. And then for my final trick, we'll bring Casalare on once again to support Pedro Luis as we wait a little bit longer to see the debut of Gaza because he's still not... 100% fit. Not even, well, he's on the bench, actually. But still not 100% fit. Gilberto Carlos hopefully isn't going to get too upset. I, at his fall from grace with the arrival of Schultz. But as you can see, Schultz also having a very good game. So it's been encouraging from several of the new boys. And of course, Pedro Luis in this match. 2-0. Couldn't have hoped for anything more from these opening couple of games. Two wins against two teams we definitely should have beaten. And as with last season, it's the same kind of script as last season, really. We need to get as many points on the board as possible before the Champions League starts because once we get into the Champions League, especially with the small size of the squad we've got and the injuries we're suffering from, it's going to get hard fast. I mean, the fact that we've got Chelsea, Manchester United and Liverpool in consecutive Premier League games 
probably with some Champions League midweek games thrown in there as well, tomorrow's episode is likely to be less straightforward than this one was. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.